Hey, what's going on guys? Today, let's create a puff effect. This effect is useful for disappearing or destroying stuff, for running dust or summoning. I have done many variations as you can see, but today we will focus on these effects I have created in collaboration with Coding Quest's YouTube channel and his new 3D RPG action course, links below. So, without further ado, let's get into this. This tutorial is divided into three parts. Let's start creating some nice particles using a simple sphere. Then, let's convert those spheres into some nice animated clouds using a visual shader. And finally, let's customize the effect so we can use it in our game. So, let's start with the particle system. So let's create the puff effect. For this effect, I want to go ahead and create a new GPU particle system. And in order for this particle to work, we need to create a new particle process material and also assign a mesh. This time I will select the sphere mesh. And as you can see, now we have a lot of spheres falling down. So let's go to accelerations and set the gravity to zero. Instead of using gravity, I want to use a radial velocity. So let's go to radial velocity and set a velocity between one and two. Cool. Now let's create a material for the, for the spheres. So let's go to geometry, material override. Let's create a new shader material new shader, select visual shader, maybe we can name it for example shader puff. Now let's open the puff shader and let's create some stuff here. First we need to add a color so let's right click and create a new color fragment, connect the color and the transparency. Also, there is one more thing. If I move the, the spheres, you can see how it gets this hard edge when it intercepts with the floor. I don't want that, so in order to fix this, we can create a proximity fade node. And let's multiply this node with the alpha channel. So now, as you can see, if we get closer to the floor, the spheres disappear, it fades. We can also control the value here. Maybe we can create a float parameter. Let's name it um, distance fade and give it a default value of 0 0.3. Cool. Excellent. Um, let's do some changes to the particle system. For example, let's go to the particle process material and I want these particles to scale down. So let's go to scale and let's put a random scale between one and three. And let's create a, a new curve. And I want these particles to start big and then go small like this maybe too much maybe something like this perfect and I also want these particles to disappear over the time so let's go to color curves and let's create a new alpha curve So I want these particles to be full opaque at the beginning and then I want them to disappear slowly. We can also give it any color we want, 
but for now I will leave them white. Okay, so the particle system is already prepared. Now let's make these spheres look like uh, clouds using a visual shader. Okay, so here's the interesting part. Let's convert this sphere into a cloud. We can do that using a shader. Let me show you. Let's go to the shader and let's go to the vertex option. Here we can control the vertices or the vertex of this sphere. This can be a quite confusing, so I will quickly open my drawing board presentation. So, as we know, a 3D sphere is composed by many little points or vertices. And let's say all of these points has a perpendicular vector, like this. So, the idea is to being able to take a black and white texture and put that texture into a sphere and tell all these points to move depending of if the point is covered by white. For example, if it's white, that's equal to 1. If it's black equals to 0, gray 0 0.5. So we can move the point depending on the texture over the sphere. Okay, so with that being said, let's go back to Godot. Let's go back to the shader, to the vertex section. And let's do some stuff. First, right click and create the vertex. Here we have all the vertices of the sphere and to these vertices I want to add a normal vector. Right click and look for normal. So look what happened when I connect this node here. Now as you can see all the vertices or the, all the points of the sphere move in the normal direction of the vector. We can also control the like the vector of the normal and reduce the size. So we can for example multiply this normal vector for a value. Let's create a float constant. For example 0 0.3. So now we reduce the size of the normal vector. 0 0.3 units and as you can see we get a small sphere. Excellent. But now let's do something interesting. I will take a texture. Let's pick for example this texture. Set it to color. And we don't need a full color because this is a black and white texture. We only need to use one channel. So I will pick this and I want to multiply this texture with the normal vector. Excellent. Now we get this interesting shape. And this is the result of this texture controlling the vertices of the, of the sphere. We can also change the intensity here using this node. Let's try with 1. So we get this crazy shape. But for the clouds, let's put a value of minus 0 0.6. So now this looks more like a cloud, right? Also, I want these clouds to be dynamic, to move. So we need to move the texture. And for moving the texture, I will create a UV panning node. Also, let's create a time node. And multiply the time with a 
vector 2 constant and let's give it a value for example of 0 0.1 and 1 now you can see how the texture is moving so the vertices of the sphere are moving with the texture which is moving using these um, values Cool. So I think this is cool. I think this this looks really nice already. But there's one more thing I want to do. I would like these clouds to look more stylized, more toony. So I want to change the way the light interacts with the with the clouds. And for doing that, I want to once again modify this shader. And this time I want to go to the light section of the shader. In this section we can control like the way this sphere interacts with the light. In this case I want this to look more anime style, more toony style. So I want to make sure that the light hits like in the hard way the mesh and also I want to give it a nice shadow contour to the to the clouds. For doing that, I am going to create a normal vector and I want to dot product this multiply this normal vector with a dot product with the Fresnel node. Let's set this Fresnel to to through inverted and connect to the diffuse channel and I know this is this might look a bit confusing I am planning to explain this a quite better in a, in the future I want to do a, a video about anime style in, in 3D games but for now let's just follow these steps I am doing in the video create a smooth step node and create a float constant another float constant that goes between 0 and 0 0.1 with this we can control the hardness of the edges and now let's create a clamp node and give it a value between 0 0.1 and 1 so with this we can control how dark are the shadows and how bright are the this this brightness cool so yeah this is this is the light node So yeah, that's that was it. We have the shader with all done already. We can close the shader and let's do some final adjustments to this puff effect. Set the amount to 12 and the explosiveness to 0 0.85. Also, I want to give it a random angle between minus 180 and 180 let's go to position I want and I want these clouds to spawn in a ring position with a value of 1 in the y axis and a height of 0 and a radius of 1 also I want to set a velocity in the y-axis between 0 0.5 and 1 and finally we can give it a nice color this time I want to use a color ramp let's create a new gradient texture enable HDRI 
and I want to start with a really intense strong purple with a raw value of 0 0.4, 0 0.05 and 1.2 and I want it to go to a full black color at the end. Also we can give it another color over here with a raw value of 0 0.2, 0 0.05 and 1. That's it. We get this really nice puff effect. Finally, if we want, we can set it to one shot. And when we need to use it, we can just emit the effect one time here by clicking here. I have also added some extra details to the puff effect, as you can see. I will not dive too much into details about this since I have already done this in the past in my heat effect tutorial. If you haven't seen my tutorial, please check it out. Basically, here I have two particle systems. One is a big quad mesh with a texture that scales down with this curve. And I did another particle system which are a bunch of quad meshes with a simple billboard texture and this simply helps to add some more impact to this puff effect. As for the step puff effect, it's almost the same. I just tweaked some parameters. For example, I have changed the color to a white color and changed the amount to two particles. Also, I have set a simple velocity into the x-axis only. The puff effect is completed and now we can customize it as we want. And of course, the possibilities are a lot, but at least you have the basics done and you can work from there. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like. And I did a few variations for my patrons. If you also want to support me, you can get all of these pop effects and many, many more effects for your games and projects. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.